Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and another episode of the Open Source Cafe. Today we have Sergio here with us from CubeShop. Sergio, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I like your scenes here for hoodie and the machine in the background. Very, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Monocle. So you all have, you know, we've done you know, a bunch of streams about it and, um, um, you know, a lot of folks, you know, from our community also contributed, you know, because it's open source. And um, uh, today we'll just talk a little bit more about, you know, the origin story and some of the more advanced use cases for like engineers. And uh, there are some new releases we want to showcase. So really excited about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, let's get started. So for folks, let's say who might be new to the community and to the open source projects, can you just tell us a little bit more about not just Monocle, but about like CubeShop? Because initially, like when I got introduced to CubeShop, so like three projects, now I think you have like even more. Um, and they're all open source projects. So what is this thirst of, you know? Yeah. So KubeShop is an accelerator for startups around cloud native and container applications. So they acquire some companies and, and they create also projects that are all open source and all related to cloud native and Kubernetes. Um, right now there's six projects uh, around. So you have TestCube and Monocle, TraceTest, KubeFirst, PodCube and Cask. And all of them are around the same space. And the thing it's our founders, uh, they're people that were working with open source many years ago. They had been doing this successfully. So this is a way of making um, companies and projects successful from the beginning, uh, knowing what to do, not guessing what you need to be doing. So this is really great. And Monocle is one of these six projects that is specifically defined around Kubernetes configuration for applications. Can you tell us a little bit more about, like, I think Monocle was one of the very first projects. And uh, can you share a little bit more about, like, what was the origin story and how did you decide to, you know, um, create this tool and what, the, what is, like, let's say, some of the challenges you're solving? Yeah. So what happened there, it's um, Ole, that is our CTO, well known. Um, in the industry, he had the idea of that. Is he was using Kubernetes and trying to create the configuration was hard. You just there's a lot of pieces. You you know that um, CNCF has like 200 projects. You need to choose, and then once you choose all of them, many of them they have their own language. You need to learn YAML, and then you need to learn the the new language for the different projects, and you need to do it in a way, and then you have to you do it properly in production. You use GTOPS, and you come to all of that, and making it right the first time, it's really hard. There's a lot of knowledge. So what happened is that many people, many teams consist in one expert, and a lot of people asking the expert how to do, and you need that YAML guru and that Kubernetes guru to work with Kubernetes. So he decided to do an IDE that will help you through the process of creating configuration. And you can do it right now with many tools. So there's a patchwork of tools. You can use Helm and customize and keep cut all. And then you can use some of the IDEs for the cloud. Um, for Kubernetes, and then you can use Argo. Uh, it's like a lot of elements that you need to put together as a developer or as a platform engineer, yes, to be able to use uh, Kubernetes. And what he decided is, okay, let's make something that is going to help you. So through the whole process of thinking, creating the content, the, the um, artifacts, the configuration, going to committing that, deploying to the cluster, uh, comparing one person to another if you need to make changes and just going into the the cluster and seeing how your application is working. We need just one tool that do some of that. Um, and that's that's Monocle. Um, yeah. in, in fact, it's an IDE that follows you through all the manifest lifecycle. So with that tool, you can get rid of many of the tools you no would normally need to create and follow configuration of your application, making you more productive, 
when you are a new nearby or you are an expert, there's tools around that. So it's easier for you to work with Kubernetes. Yeah. And the initial idea I was like, um, that's in, like you mentioned, the CNC of landscape, that can be a bit overwhelming, but also just the amount of, like if you're talking about developers, developers only want to focus on, let's say, just, you know, writing code and just and shipping it. Not everyone likes working with YAML files. And I think uh, Monocle makes it, you know, easy for folks, basically, who don't like working with YAML files. Um, yeah. And over the course, like it has evolved quite a lot. So initially, let's say you were, you know, focusing on a particular group of people. Has that changed over time, or have you, has your like goal changed over time? And is there any new field you're looking in now? Yeah, I would say that the very beginning, the scratch was YAML. YAML is hard. You make a lot of mistakes. You need to write a lot of YAML. Let's make the best YAML editor. And that was developers that needed to write YAML. And I think that has evolved a lot because we we discover two things. It's it's not only YAML, it's more than the it's the version of YAML that Kubernetes uses and all the CRDs and everything attached about that. And the second thing is you don't write YAML, you write configuration for applications. So you, there's, there's a lot of other things. And that's uh, introduced the platform engineer, DevOps, GTOps engineers, because the developers doesn't work in isolation. So one of the things we are hearing a lot is that uh, developers basically try to do the minimum and the quality suffers because you try to do anything that works so you can go on with the real work, your coding. But that implies that the platform engineers need to get your configuration and modify it so it works appropriately. Uh, using Monocle and tools like that, you add an additional layer of quality to your deployments. So instead of having to guess, you can use tools and policies that allows you to create things at the first time. And I've done deployments in Kubernetes and anytime I create an application, it takes me like 20 tries just to be able to deploy my application. There's always some variable that doesn't work or some deployment thing I forgot to put in my definition of the pod. And having tools that helps you identify that and reduce the time it takes you to do it are really great. They, they serve a lot of purpose. So as I said, we're moving from development only to development, but also putting guardrails and helping platform engineers to define what need to be in place. Yeah, no, could, couldn't agree more. And just a little detour well, about the platform engineering thing. As people have mixed opinions. But what, what is your opinion when comparing it with like, like DevOps? Is it a DevOps killer, as people say? I, I don't think so. But what do you think? I think there are different levels. At the end, all the DevOps, it's a change of culture, how you work together. Um, we know that doesn't work. Um, it doesn't work. You, you you can try to make it work, but people in reality they tend to go back to what they do best, and and all the but DevOps need tools and need workflows that work, and that's when you get into GTOps, um, platform engineering, uh, internal development platform. All those things basically make the promise of DevOps real not anymore like you need to talk to this. Um, I have kids, so it's like, yeah, you need to be friends with this because I, I want you to. Well, that, that doesn't work. You can try. And this is more like there's tools for plumbing engineers to be comfortable. There's tools for developers to work with them in a language they both understand. So I think you're doing both when you're working. Um, with platforms, engineers, or GTOPS engineers, or any of the fancy names we invent every week. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, to agree with you. And um, let's talk a little bit more about you know, Monocle Cloud for uh, for like uh, let's give let's so let's talk with an example. For example, like uh, you know most of the projects you know, that you have are open sourced. Uh, can can you give us maybe a few examples or like demo how to use it with other open source projects like Helm or, or Customize? Yeah, yeah, I will. 
So just to know, the Monocle used to be Monocle Desktop. So we launched a beta of Monocle Cloud recently, and now we are out of beta. Last week, we, we moved out of beta. And the idea is this. You have the desktop that has some features. I, I will show you quickly at the end. But then you have the cloud, and the cloud doesn't need your a navigator. You don't need a laptop. Just help you. And in fact, one of the tests we did was with an iPad, and it worked beautifully. So I'm going to share my screen if I can. Share a screen. Yeah. So can you see my screen? It's as easy as going to app.monocle.com. We need some permission, very basic, just accessing to your repos, because this is all based on JIT and GitOps. So we're going to connect to GitHub, and we're going to see the repos that you have there. Actually, once you sign up with GitHub, uh, you can directory explore, so you don't need to to use your personal repos or any private repo. You can go to any repo. And the way this is going to go, it's either you go directory and explore, that's part of the demo I'm going to show, or you create an organization where you have different roles, and then you can add projects to your organization. Um, this is a cloud project. It uses many of the technology of the open source uh, project, but it's not open source. But it has a, a very big uh, free tier that you can use. And if you need the technology and you're not comfortable using something that is not open source, you can use the CLI that it's available with all the validations. Or you can go and download Monocle Desktop that is and will be always open source. So you go to the project. And the project has different repos inside. Um, you can, of course, add members so they can see what you're doing and they can do changes. And also, you can define policies. And this is where the gap between DevOps um, platform engineers and developers come. Because as a user, I can go and say, well, you know, I want these policies to be always enforced. So when you do a pull request, we have a GitHub action and we have a JIT bot, a GitHub bot. So if, if you, if you um, are a platform engineer, you can define these things like there's no bad alias, and this always has to be there, and you can integrate that in your pull request. Anyway, I'm not going to do it, because if I do this, that will be fixed forever, uh, and I don't want to come here and delete the, the policy again. But I can show you how this works. So I'm opening any repo. You can explore any repo in GitHub will be available to you. And what we're going to do is open the repo. We access it, and we evaluate everything that is inside. So the first thing you see, all the files, file explorer, all the files in your repo. This is our internal demo. We're going to be looking at that. And we're going to process all that information that is here. And we're going to show it. So these resources are the resources that are created by these files. So any repo, third-party repo that you have here, you want to know what's installed when you install a Helm chart. You want to know what's going on. You just point to it, and it will process. Monocle will process all the information, and it will start giving you um, information about that. You can edit it here if you have write access, you can edit directory here in the navigator, but I will come back later to that. And also, as you can see, we all the time validate the, um, the information at different levels. So yes, this is creating four deployments with different namespaces, and what we're going to be doing is comparing that with different policies. So we're looking at that, generating validation errors, and we do that at, at different levels. Um, we can do that as open policies. So we look at the information. You can actually define if this is going to be an error or a warning. And you can enable and disable different policies. So we're looking at your process shouldn't elevate its privileges, or you shouldn't be state admin capable in your process. Again, this is a way of knowing that what you deploy to application is going to work as you want. 
We do that, but we also validate the schema. So what happens when you change your cluster from 1.24 to 1.26? You can basically come to Monaco, change the schema version, and it will tell you if the CRDs and all the processes are mm, compatible with the version of Kubernetes schema that you define. We talk at the beginning, YAML is hard, so we can also validate the YAML. You make a mistake in the number of spaces, you don't put the, play, the elements in the places where it should be, we know that and we will generate a warning or an error around that. And lastly, we look at every single link and we tell you what links are available. So you see these link icons here, we're basically saying this is an input link, so build block deployment is referring to this. And if I go to this, this is referring to another three things with the lines, so it's really easy to look at that. More than that, and I know it's a, it's a lot, but if you're learning Kubernetes, we have the graph view, so we're gonna have a relationship between all the elements and you know what happened, and again, all the time seeing the validation problems, and this is the list I was showing before, so I know I have to change these things in line 13, line 22, in line 27, because I have errors, and if I need to know more, I can go to my deployment um, documentation and directly open the Kubernetes documentation here. So imagine how powerful um, this can be when you are doing this, when you're trying to understand what's going on, or when you are just reviewing a pull request and want to know why there's a new pull request. You want to make sure that that is going to work in production as expected. That's a lot, but it's not everything. I told you, we have the image reference, so we know what reference with one, and of course, if you open some of the images, there's always going to be the the latest is not the label you should be using error in OPA. The other thing you can do is use Helm and customize. So I can go here, I can look up my Helm charts, and I know there's a Helm chart for a certification manager in my configuration, and I can preview my validation. So when I do, when I do this, all the resources you are seeing as those resources created using my values file in my Helm chart, included in my repo. And that's great because I see the final values, I have the validation in place, so if something is not working, the cluster role binding is referring to this name, and this is a missing link, and of course we don't connect to the cluster, so sometimes there's errors because we don't know what's happening in the cluster, but as you can see there's a lot of information and a lot of references. Uh, to what is going on. What more things we can do, because that will be, you, you have the help preview, the customized preview, you can see everything that is there, you can see the resources created. The next thing is, as I'm saying, you're an expert, you want to do a comparison, you want to know what changed. You can basically go to your current branch, uh, you can go to, um, to another branch, and you can compare the result of one branch to another. So if this is a pull request, I can basically go see all the resources, know that this block application is not present in my bar application, and I know the blue CMS, it's import 81 instead of this should be a number that is actually an error that you can see. So I'm immediately know and that's something that happened a lot. When I see a pull request, I don't need to be Mm, generating the result in my head, I can go to Monaco and look at the uh, at the two versions of the application, and I can say, well, th this is the change. They change this because this is going to make these errors, and this is going to change, fix this warning, and this is going to change the number of mm, replicas to five instead of to three. And I can do that also with help preview, so I can compare my JIT uh, current branch and I can compare that with the result of my help review. So if I'm trying to generate an, something using a help review, I can also store that in JIT, and I can compare the result of the two versions I have stored 
selecting the values file or comparing between one fa values file and the other. Of course, this is based on JIT, so I can see my pull requests and I can commit my changes. I can do editing, I can, I can see my changes and I can commit it directly there. And that's a very, very, very quick demo on, on Monocle Cloud. So any question there? That's great. And I, I love how you showcase, you know, the more advanced use cases like validation, but, but also like folks, let's say, who are starting to learn and how it can help, it can help them. Um, so Monocle Cloud is great. I, I know initially it was just like uh, the desktop application. Um, I was having a conversation, you know, with the team and they're like, yeah, you know, uh, working on something pretty cool. So nice to see that that's out. But um, regarding the new, like latest uh, 2.0 release, uh, can you tell us uh, or maybe show a demo of the desktop and the, the CLI as well? Uh, like, I know there are some, like some things around templates and like the cluster modes and all sorts of things. And then yeah. we can talk a little bit about uh, contributions later. So as we say, it's Everything you see in the cloud, it's available in the desktop. We are using a library that is shared between both of them, all the validation, everything you're seeing, it's in the desktop. Um, so that's there, but there's some specific things that are only available in the desktop. So let me share my screen again, um, or we can do that, and I will show you those differences. So the first thing, of course, this is a single user application so there's no concept of organizations um, and that's two and the other thing is we have access to your local folder so most of the things we do in JIT are based on having access to a local copy of the information in your desktop but more or less it's the same and this is the new version to the zero we change a lot of the interface there's two things that are specific and really important. The first thing is you can create resources. So you can go here and using a model, a bare model without information or some of the advanced templates we have, you can really go and say, well, I want to create an advanced pod and we're gonna be able to ask you a few things. What is the namespace? What image are you using? What is the command that you use when you start the container? And it will generate um, a thing. So let's do like test. And the image is going to be this one. And the command is run. I know it's, it's not right. But let me go with that. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is hiding the button. I need to push. And this is going to create one thing. And then I can go. And I will see my new pod created here. And it's again the same. It's the navigation with the customize, the Helm previews. Uh, I can select different things. I have images, but also I have the resources. I can see my errors the same way that we did in the cloud. Um, and what I've used the template, so it's there. What I can do is, is store it in JIT the same way we did in the cloud. This is the changes I can sync, I can commit a stage and commit the the changes into JIT. Again, the repo. Things that are in the desktop but they are not in the cloud, they will be shortly in the cloud. We're working on it right now. It's like this. This is a validation pane, so you can actually go and look at the errors that you have in your code and you can fix it. Just doing TDD, but for configuration, I have all the rules applicable. I look at them and I correct one after the other. I still have this, the compare and sync, but if you look at this, this one small difference that makes a lot, that is the cluster mode. So I can go to my cluster and connect, and I'm gonna have a real-time version of what's going on on my cluster. So I can go deploy my application. Uh, actually, when I compare, I can deploy directory from Monocle into my cluster. Again, I have the version, all the things that were so nice in, in the cloud, and then I'm gonna be able to see my nodes, I'm gonna be able to see my pods, I'm gonna be even accessing the logs or having direct access to my cell in my pods. 
So from using the templates, I was saying, to all the configuration validation, making sure everything's working, and then going to my cluster and, uh, and see what is going there. And if I see something is broken or production goes down um, for any change I've done, I can basically go and say, can you compare the configuration in my Monaco with my configuration in my cluster? You will be able to compare your configuration locally and the cluster, and then you can actually push the configuration to the cluster directory from inside Monaco. And I think that makes the main difference between um, the desktop that has the template, the validation pane, and the cluster mode, um, compared to to the cloud that is more about enforcing policies and configuration and team working and making your project and organization working together to make sure that the quality is the one required by everybody in the tool chain. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for sharing, Sergio. Really appreciate it. And um, it's it's really nice to see because this one last question is like, uh, why do you think there might be like a need for both cloud and desktop? And the, basically, they cover overlapping but different use cases. So if I'm a developer, I'm going to be using the desktop because it's, it has everything. I can connect to my cluster. I don't need to use other tools. And I can go and follow my application from the very beginning, the inception, once I had the code, to just seeing how it's working in the cluster. And if something is wrong, I can go to the cluster and see if there's any resource or there's restrictions or something change that is breaking my application. There's people that doesn't know, doesn't like IDEs. So for those people, we have the CLI. So you can have the validation in the CLI. But at the end, I'm working with a team, and the team will have also platform engineers. We want platform engineers to define those policies and just say, well, you know, when you do your pull request to change your configuration, we want to know what's going on, what is changing, why it's changing, and we want to make sure that you are following the policies in, that we have in place so you don't forget, and I've done this, um, you don't forget the label. So you have to have the label for cost management or for many other reasons. I've seen people that what they do, they have a work uh, worker that will look at the cluster and if there's some label missing, they will delete the workloads. That's painful, but people learn and they never forget, more or less, they no, don't forget again. Uh, this is a way of going and saying, well, you know, in your pull request, we have identified that you have forgotten to put the label there. So we won't accept that workload until you put the label in there. And that's reduced, puts a lot of shift left and puts a lot of power in the developer that doesn't need to care about that. And also there's a lot of power in the platform engineer that basically knows that what they need to focus on is, okay, why is this person asking for five pods instead of three? And they know that instead of trying to understand difference in small pieces of JAML and uh, trying to guess if that's going to break any of the tens of policies they need to remember to make this work. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that, and uh, you know, I've, see, I've seen the project evolve over the past few months. So, uh, a lot of things have been added, a lot of new advancements. What are some of the things that folks can look forward to, you know, in the future? What are some of the things in development right now? So, we have a lot of things in development. This is moving really, really fast. But uh, I will say, for the cloud, we're going to double down in policies. So, we want to make easier to write policies. We want to make easier to to help that. In fact. We want feedback on that. If you try it, we, we want to do that. And one of the things the JIT had bought is going to be released soon. We are adding enhancement to the CLI. But there's a lot of policy and, and sharing features having on the cloud. For the desktop, 
we are working also in a good in a lot of things. So one of the things we are doing right now it's we are collaborating with Argo, so we are providing some code for uh, for Jamel. So the Jamel editor, we are trying to make it work properly in this in the way you have seen, and we are working with them. Uh, we are working also on Helm and Customize because we have identified that there's a lot of people using Helm, but there's very little people capable of creating Helm charts, and we want to make that really easy. So you, you want to package your application and deploy that. But also we discover that the same can be said for other projects. So we've been working with maintainers of Kubebella, and they tell us the same. It's hard for people to create uh, content using the Kubebella definitions outside of the examples. So having a tool that can do all this validation and templating and allowing you to create that, it's amazing. So we're going to be working on that. We're going to add more things to cluster mode. We're, we are improving the support we have for JIT because we understand it's really important when you are working in these things to have all the power of GTOPS and many other things that are coming. But I think those are big enough for to take a lot of our times in, in the next few months. Couldn't, couldn't agree more and looking forward to it. Um, just one last question while we are talking about contributions is how folks can get involved, how they can contribute. Let's talk about uh, the desktop, uh, CLI, and the cloud. But it's really easy. This you go to Cube Shop. This Monocle, uh, Monocle Core, that is the shared libraries, and we are splitting Monocle Core into Monocle Core and Monocle CLI. We label uh, good first time issues. So if you want to contribute, you can go and look for the labels for the first contributors. If you have to, you want to work on something more, or you want to do. A, a bigger contribution. You can talk to us directly. You can join our Discord and go to our Discord and talk to us. We are everybody in the team is there, including me, but the engineers. So you can set up your process and your information, and you can ask. And we will be very happy to accept issues and comments. And if you go to Discord and really say, "I'm trying to do this and I can't." I will be very happy to set up a 30 minutes or one hour conversation with you just to make sure I have all the inputs. We want to make this the best IDE in the cloud and in the desktop for Kubernetes. We saw the CNCF talking about IDEs and how the IDEs are going to be the big thing this year. We want to be that IDE that everybody is talking about. Amazing. And uh, definitely. Uh, that's the beauty of open source that you know get feedback and uh, to, you know folks can contribute and all, all sorts of things. But yeah, I uh, really appreciate you giving your time, Sergio. Thanks a lot for joining, and uh, I will see you at KubeCon. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, make sure you stop by uh, Cube Shop uh, booths. But yeah, really, really looking forward to it. And uh, you know, time goes by now really fast. Just last, like it was. Yes, recently it was Valencia, then Detroit, and now we're preparing for Amsterdam. So it's all very happening very fast. <laughs> yeah. so I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the new advancements. And uh, we've had some pretty nice people you know, contribute from the community. So hopefully they, you know, watch this stream and you know see what all things are in development and get their contributions back. But um, yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, again, thanks for giving your time uh, for everyone else. All the links, uh, everything Sergio mentioned, you can find it in the description below. And you can join the community groups by Keep Shop as well. You can find those in the description below as well. So you can you know, carry forward the conversation. If you have any questions, you can ask those in the Discord channel. But yeah, that's good. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.